Hi everyone, I'm Tony Florida, a developer advocate for Linode, and in this video series, I'm going to be walking you through the process of building a functioning Django web application. Now, this is going to be much more than a basic Python coding tutorial, because over the next few videos, we're going to be talking about everything from setting up your web development environment, which is the topic of today's video, to integrating a stock market API, and designing the front end user interface with Bootstrap. So let's start off today by first installing the Django web framework on a Linode virtual private server. We'll then stand up a GitLab server, which is where our version code will live. And finally, we'll finish off by pushing our code changes up to the Git server. Okay guys, so from your Linode dashboard, let's create a new Linode by doing create Linode and going over to the marketplace, finding the Django app. And we just have a couple configuration options down here. Our username, password, and an email address. Now for the image, Debian 10 is the only option, so we'll stick with that. And for the region, pick something that's close to you or your users. I'll pick California. And as far as the Linode plan is concerned, you have a lot of flexibility here. I'm just gonna pick a basic two gigabyte of RAM plan. And the last option here is the root password. And when you type that in, everything else is optional so we can click on create. Now this will take a minute or two to boot up and when that's finished, we can go ahead and log in via SSH. All right, now that our Linode server is booted up and running, we can copy the IP address. And if you're on Mac or Linux, you can use terminal application. If you're on Windows, you can use PuTTY. Let's go ahead and SSH as root into our server. So just type that followed by the IP address, hit enter, type in your password. And now we are logged into that remote server. Now, if this is your first time working with Django or a Linode in general, you might not know where to start. So let's go ahead into the var www directory, which is the default location for a lot of public facing HTML files. So here we do see that we have a Django app pre-installed courtesy of Linode. Let's go into that directory and you'll see some basic Django application web framework files here. Now, as far as seeing your Django application in a web browser, uh, Linode also does the honor of already installing and running your process in the background. So we can see that with a PSAUX command, and we'll see that our server is running on port 8000 here. So if we get out of our terminal window and go back into our browser, we can copy our IP address, paste it in the URL address bar, followed by port 8000, and you'll see that we have our Django application up and running. Okay, so back in our terminal window, we can start to version our code here, and we can do that with Git. So by default, Git is not installed on the server, but we can get it very easily with apt get install git. This will just take up 30 megabytes, 38 megabytes of space. Hit Y, enter to install Git. And now we have Git on our system. So we can initialize a Git repository at this directory by typing in git init. And it says it has initialized an empty Git repository right here. So now we can do a Git status and we'll see that we are on the master branch. We don't have any commits yet. And these files are available to commit to our repository. Now, we don't really want all of these files to be added to the repository. So we can ignore some of them with a git ignore file. So let's go ahead and make a git ignore file. It's just a dot followed by git ignore. And I'm gonna use my cheat sheet over here to paste in some common files and directories that we want to ignore. So um, you can do the same thing here. We'll go ahead and save that file. Now, if we do a git status, we can see the same type of results, but when we do a git add dot, which is gonna add everything under this directory, except for the things in git ignore, we can see that we are adding the following seven or eight files to our repository, but they're not at it just yet. We have to do a commit. So let's do a git commit dash M for the message. And in the message, we'll just say initial commit of 
default Django app. So those files have now been committed to our Git repository and we can confirm that with a Git log. And we can see that our first commit is right here at this date. And there is our message that we just added. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is stand up our GitLab server, which is going to act as our remote Git repository. We can do that back in Linode, similar to what we did before, create a Linode. And in the marketplace, we want to find the GitLab application. And down here, we can add a domain name, but that is optional, so we won't do that. It's gonna be run on Debian 9. I'm gonna put this also in California. And for this one, they recommend, and when I say they, I mean Linode recommends at least eight gigabytes. So we'll pick that plan here. And finally, our root password down here. And I can click create to create that server. And as before, this will take a few seconds to start up. So I'll catch back up with you when that finishes. All right, so GitLab takes a little bit longer to boot up, but when it's finished, you can copy the IP address open up a new tab in your browser and paste that in. And this should take you to the GitLab registration page. So let's go ahead and change our password. And when that's finished, we can now register for an account. So fill this information out. And when you're finished, click on register. Now this will take us to the dashboard for GitLab and the first thing we wanna do is to create a project. So click on create project here and let's just say that this is going to be a stock market demo project. And you can see that's where your code is going to be accessible at and the slug for the project is right there. We can optionally add a description I'm going to change the visibility level to public and I'm going to head it, go ahead and create the project. Now by default, you'll get this message that you won't be able to pull or push code via SSH until you add an SSH key to your profile. So that's something that we want to do right away here. Let's click on add an SSH key. And this, this uh, up here, if you have one, you can use an existing key or if you need to generate one, you can do that with these instructions, but I'll walk you through generating one here. Um, back on our other web server, our virtual private server with Django, we wanna execute a few commands here. So in order to do that, we can do ssh dash keygen. Um, the type of algorithm is ed25519. And that's going to ask where we want to save our SSH key public key file. The default's fine. Enter a pair of passphrase. Empty's fine. Empty's fine. And now we have that in that location. So if we cat root SSH and then ID dot pub, we can see the contents of our public key right here. So we simply want to take this, copy it, come back over to our GitLab server, paste it in, and add our key like that. So with that out of the way, let's go to our projects again and find our project, the stock market demo project. And in here, it does a really good job of walking you through the process. You have a couple options here, um, configuration options. We do wanna set up our global username and email. So let's copy this information come back over to our terminal window and paste it in. So Git knows who we are and can identify us on our commits. Now, if we didn't already create a repository, we could clone the repository at GitLab right now, but because we do have an existing repository, we're gonna follow these directions down here. And we did the git init, so we just need to add the git remote, which is gonna link up our local repository down here with the remote repository up at GitLab. So that looks good. We did the git add, we did the git commit. Now we just have to do the git push. So we'll copy that code down here, paste it into our Django web server. And because we have our keys and everything in place, we'll get this first time message. Are you sure you wanna finish this connection? Yes, we trust it. And now our code has been pushed 
from our Linode virtual private server with our Django app on it up to our GitLab server. And we can confirm that by refreshing this page. And we should see our commits here. And we do, so that's very good. So let's take it a step further and create our own Django web application. So what I want you to do is log in via SSH to your server and go to the var www Django application directory. And when you're there, you'll remember that we just have the basic Django project files that was uh, pre-installed on here for us. But let's go ahead and create a Django web application and we can do that with the start app command. And you'll soon find out that a lot of your Django commands, mostly all of them are gonna be coming uh, through somehow the manage.py file. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So let's go ahead and type Python three manage.py start app. Okay, the start app command and the name of the, the web app that you wanna create. I'm just gonna keep it simple and call mine stocks. So what that does is creates this stocks subdirectory under your main Django project. And that's where all the code for your stocks application is gonna live. So let's go ahead and go into that directory. And by default, you get some stuff here, create it for you, views, tests, models, et cetera, et cetera. We'll look at some of these, not all of them, but basically in this tutorial, we're going to be editing three files total editing or creating. The first one we're gonna edit is the views.py file. So let's go ahead and open that. And we're basically gonna get rid of everything here and start from scratch. I'm gonna use my cheat sheet over here and copy and paste some code in here. And this is basically just three lines of code, okay? It's very simple. We're defining a function called index that accepts a request and returns an HTTP response from the Django library that simply says, hello world, you are at the stocks page. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna link this function to execute when we visit a page. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're gonna make a file in here in the stocks subdirectory called urls.py. Whoops, urls.py. Okay, and again, I'm gonna use my cheat sheet over here and copy and paste some code. And this here is how we're associating a, a view, specifically the view that's called index, which we're importing from this directory as indicated by this dot, uh, the file called views.py, we're importing that and the function named index. And we're associating that with the root path, which is right here, just uh, an empty string. Okay, so that's all set up for our index page here. Let's go ahead and link this to the project. Okay, so we have our web app, we have to link it to our Django project. And we can do that by backing out one directory going into the Django app folder. And there is another folder in here called Django app. And inside of there, we want to edit a file called urls.py. Now there's one additional import that we want to bring in and that is called include. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And we're gonna basically model what we see here for the admin console. And you can go ahead and test that out on your own time. Go to your web app, uh, IP address, colon 8000 slash admin, and you'll see an admin panel. Uh, but we're gonna do something similar here for the for our, our new page that we're making. So we're gonna say path, and this you can call whatever. I'm just gonna call it stocks slash, okay? and I'm gonna use the include function that we imported here. And we're gonna import stocks dot URLs. So the file that we just created inside the stocks directory called URLs, we're gonna import that and associate it with anytime somebody goes to the stocks directory, we're gonna execute that index definition function that we just created in the stocks web app. So let's go ahead and save this. And also if you remember from last time, uh, we can see that we have our web server running in the background here on port 8000. So we can do something similar and run another web server on our own port. So let's go ahead and type Python three manage pi run server 
and we'll just use the same 0.0.0.0, .0 which allows um, the connection uh, on any IP address. And let's pick 8001. So now we have a second web server running. This doesn't use Apache or Nginx or any other web server. It's just the uh, development environment for Django. And if we go into our website or into a web browser and go to our IP address colon 8001 slash stocks, we should see the page that we just created. So I'll go ahead and move this off to the side and just so we can see both windows at once because we're gonna see the request come through here. So up here, let's open up a new tab. Uh, actually, let's use this existing tab. So we'll change it to port 8001 slash stocks. And if everything works correctly, we should see the hello world, you are at the stocks page. All right, so that's really cool. And take a look at the terminal window on the left-hand side as I refresh the page. You'll see that those HTTP requests are coming in every time I refresh the page. So that's our web server, our Django web server working in the background. Now, if we control C to get out of this, we can refresh the page again and you'll see that that web server is gone, but that's okay. We can start it back up with the same command and refresh the page and we'll be back to where we started there. All right, so as far as the code is concerned for this tutorial, we are done coding. Let's go ahead and version our code with git. So back here in our terminal window, we can do a git status and we'll see that we have modified our Django app URLs file and there is an untracked directory here called stock. So we can basically add everything again. So we can do git add dot to add everything. And if we do a git status, we can see what we're gonna add to our repository now. All these files, so let's go ahead and do a git commit dash m for message, and we'll say something along the lines of add it a stocks web app. Okay, that looks good. If we look at our git log, we now have two commits, one from last time, one from this time, and we can push our changes up to the GitLab server, so git push origin master oh whoops i spelled origin wrong o-r-i-g-i-n that is the name of the remote server and the branch is master so go ahead and hit that enter and our changes have been pushed up to our gitlab server so back in our web browser we can come over here refresh the page and now we'll see that we have new commits as of 53 seconds ago and the old commits from the first video and that's about it for this first video here. In the next video, we're gonna be working with user input and creating an HTML form. So check that out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.